So I call this talk Fatima Today. Today. Why Fatima Today? Many of you might have said something, maybe people who are a little older might have said, when I was a kid I could get a burger for five cents. Now the burger is five dollars. When I was a kid we could go to the cinema for 20 cents. Now I gotta pay 950. So throughout this talk I want you to do two things. Number one, I want you to keep in mind what is the spiritual conversion rate today? 1917, 2019, things are terribly, terribly worse. So when we hear about souls going to hell or we hear about necessary for penances and sacrifices, keep in mind what is the conversion rate? Number two, I want you to keep in mind the age of the audience. Seven years old was Jacinta. Does anybody here know seven-year-olds, eight-year-olds, ten-year-olds? I have a son who's ten. He's about this tall. He's emotionally fragile, as most children are. I have a daughter who's seven, also emotionally fragile. So as we go through these things, seven years old, keep that in mind. Eight years old, keep that in mind. Ten years old. Why would Our Lady do this? Why would she come to the most fragile, innocent, poor, obscure children that she's ever, that you could ever pick? You cannot pick anybody poorer than shepherd children in Portugal in 1917. You can't. She picks those weak ones because she's picked all of us. Because if it can apply to children who have no excuse, it can apply to us. If she would have gone to somebody rich, we would have thought, oh, that's a message for a rich person, and they had to do that because they had a special authority and a special power. These people had no special authority, they had no special power. I'm going to do something during this talk that I don't like to do, but I'm going to do it because I need credibility. I'm going to read some stuff to you. Normally, I just like to talk uh, back and forth, but I have to read things so that you know that I'm not making this up. This isn't my message. I come here in the name of Mary to the Legion of Mary because we need help. We're in a spiritual battle and we're doing very, 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 very badly. We're losing the battle, so to speak. We all know in the end Jesus wins, but we're losing souls day by day and we cannot wait for the end. Just recently, we have public celebration, public celebration of killing babies up to the point where they're born, up to the point where they're delivered. It's, our, it's horrific at any age. But to publicly celebrate this is absolutely disgusting. And then to put it on buildings, how much more diabolical? That's just the beginning. If we're celebrating that, what's next? We have to fight back. There's something wrong with what we're doing. So we're going to start the way the children started with the message of an angel. So the angel first appearing to the children says to them, do not be afraid. I am the angel of peace. Pray with me. The children felt a natural inclination to put their heads to the ground. And they prayed the words that they heard him say. My God, I believe, I adore, I hope, and I love you. I ask pardon for those who do not believe, do not adore, do not hope, and do not love you. And they repeated this several times. An angel appeared to children in 1917 asking them to, to pray for those who do not believe. How many more people do we have that not believe today? After repeating this prayer three times, the angel rose and said, Pray in this way. The hearts of Jesus and Mary are ready to listen to you. His words sank so deeply into our minds that we never forgot them. And ever after, we used to spend long periods on our knees repeating them, sometimes until we fell down exhausted. Imagine if you had children and you go into their bedroom and they're kneeling on the ground praying this prayer nonstop over and over and over again until they pass out. You would take them to psychiatrists, rightfully so. I would, my, if I went to my room and I saw my children doing that, I would take them to psychologists, psychiatrists, say, what's wrong with my kids? They're not stable. But this is something that God himself is wanting from these children. The next time the angel came to them, the children are playing. Suddenly, we saw the same angel near us. What are you doing? You must pray, pray. The hearts of Jesus and Mary have merciful designs for you. You must offer your prayers and sacrifices to God the Most High. The children ask, but how are we to sacrifice? Again, if you're gonna ask a kid, they don't know what this means, sacrifice. The angel says, in every way you can offer sacrifice to God in reparation for the sins by which he is offended and in supplication for sinners. In this way you will bring peace to your country, 
For I am its guardian angel, the angel of Portugal. Above all, bear and accept with patience the sufferings God will send you. The angel's words sank deeply into their souls. The value of sacrifice and how much it pleases God and how he receives it for the conversion of sinners. So far, this message is all about saving people. The next time he appears, the angel has the Eucharist and he gives him a prayer. I'm not going to go through it because it's rather long. But he's basically saying, we offer you this sacrifice in reparation for the outrages, sacrileges, and indifference by which he is offended. And by the infinite merits of his most sacred heart and the immaculate heart of Mary. So it's all, again, about offering sacrifice. After the, they've received communion, he says, Eat and drink the body and blood of Jesus Christ, terribly outraged by the ingratitude of men. Offer reparation for their sakes and console God. Wow, this is uh, not a very pleasant situation for these children. And they said that when the angel was there, that it was like an overwhelming presence where they felt like they were going to be annihilated in the presence of God. On May 13th, the first apparition occurred. I put out three things that stood out to me. Mary appears and says, Fear not, I will not harm you. Where are you from? asked the children. I'm from heaven. The beautiful lady replied gently, raising her hand towards the distant horizon. What do you want of me? Lucia asked. I came to ask you to come here for six consecutive months on the 13th day at the same hour. I will tell you later who I am and what I want, and I shall return here again a seventh time. Lucia said, Do you come from heaven and will I go to heaven? Yes, you'll go. How about Jacinta? She is well. And Francisco? Remember, he's only eight. Him too, but he'll have many rosaries to say first. Wow, that's not good. Eight years old? They don't have like cell phones. They didn't have Nintendos. They didn't have anything. Poor kid. Also, it should be noted that Francisco could not hear Our Lady. So Jacinta and Lucia could hear. Constantly after the apparitions, Francisco would say, what did she say? What did she say? And there was obviously some sin, some defect in Francisco that he was only able to see Our Lady but not able to hear. And only afterwards he would have to ask the, the other seers. And even then they wouldn't want to talk about it. In the end, Our Lady asked the children, Again, these are children. Blessed Mother, what are you doing? Do you wish to offer yourselves to God, to endure all the sufferings that he may please to send you, as an act of reparation for the sins by which he is offended, and to ask for the conversion of sinners? Of course, the Blessed Mother appears to you and she asks you something, you should always say yes. And the children said yes. And then she replies, you'll have a lot to suffer, but the grace of God will be your comfort. Then she opened her hands with a loving gesture of her mother who offers her heart. From it, an intense light departed that seemed to go through them. The vision vanished, telling them, recite the rosary every day to obtain the peace of the world and to end the war. She disappeared. So again, we have an eight-year-old that has to pray many rosaries for his salvation. They have to offer sacrifices regularly and they have to pray the rosary. Again, I would reflect on what about me? What in all of this am I being called to do? The second apparition is kind of easy. Mary appears again. Our Lady was there on the home oak, exactly the same as in May. What do you want of me, I asked. I wish you to come here on the 13th of next month to pray the rosary every day and to learn to read. Later I will tell you what I want. I asked for the cure of a sick person. If he is converted, he will be cured during the year. I think that's very interesting. So Mary is saying, this person will only be cured if they're converted. That made me kind of curious. I put that as a little side note for myself. I would like to ask you to take us to heaven. Yes, I will take Jacinta and Francisco very soon, but you are to stay here for some time longer. Jesus wishes to make use of you to make me known and loved. He wants to establish in the world devotion to my immaculate heart. Am I to stay here alone? Lucia asks. No, my daughter. Are you suffering a great deal? Don't lose heart. I will never forsake you. My immaculate heart will be your refuge in the way that will lead you to God. As Our Lady spoke these last words, she opened her hands, and for the second time, she communicated to us the rays of that same immense light. We saw ourselves in this light as it were immersed in God. So, a lot of times our theology says that Mary leads us to Jesus. So in this apparition, it's very easy to see that theology being played out. The light comes through Mary's hands, but somehow the children had a greater understanding and awareness of the presence of God. Oh, this is my favorite. Of all the apparitions, July 13th, I like the most. It's the most telling in my opinion. Our Lady appeared on the home oak. 
What do you want of me? I asked. I want you to come here on the 13th of next month to continue to pray the rosary every day in honor of Our Lady of the Rosary in order to obtain peace for the world and the end of the war because only she can help you. I would like to ask you to tell us who you are and to work a miracle so that everybody will believe that you're appearing to us, the kids asked. Continue to come here every month. In October, I will tell you who I am and what I want. I will perform a miracle for all to see and believe. I then made some requests, but I cannot recall what they were. What I do remember is that Our Lady said it was necessary for people to pray the rosary in order to obtain these graces. So a lot of people went to Lucia and said, my son, my this and that, I have this problem, I have that problem. And Mary said, have them pray the rosary every day if they want to obtain these graces later in the year. And she continued, sacrifice yourself for sinners and say many times, especially wherever you make sacrifice, O oh Jesus, it is for love of you, for the conversion of sinners, and in reparation for the sins against the Immaculate Heart of Mary. As Our Lady spoke these last words, she opened her hands once more, as she had done previously. The rays of light seemed to penetrate the earth, and we saw, as it were, a sea of fire. Plunged in this fire were demons and souls in human form, like transparent burning embers, all blackened or burnished bronze, floating about in the conflagration. Now raised into the air by the flames that issued from within themselves, together with great clouds of smoke, now falling back on every side like sparks in huge fires, without weight or equilibrium, amid shrieks and groans of pain and despair, which horrified us and made us tremble with fear. It must have been the sight that caused me to cry out, as people say that they heard me. The demons could be distinguished by their terrifying and repellent likeness to frightful and unknown animals, black and transparent like burning coals. Terrified and as if to plead for succor, we looked up at Our Lady, who said to us kindly but so sadly, You have seen hell where poor sinners go. To save them, God wishes to establish in the world devotion to my Immaculate Heart. If what I say to you is done, many souls will be saved and there will be peace. The war is going to end, but if people do not cease offending God, a worse one will break out during the pontificate of Pius XI. When you see a knight illuminated by an unknown light, know that this is the great sign given you by God, and he is about to punish the world for its crimes by means of war, famine, and persecutions of the church and of the Holy Father. To prevent this, I shall come to ask for the consecration to to Russia, to my Immaculate Heart, and this is something we can do, and the communion of reparation on the first Saturdays. If my requests are heeded, Russia will be converted and there will be peace. If not, she will spread her errors throughout the world, causing wars and persecutions of the church. The good will be martyred. The Holy Father will have much to suffer. Various nations will be annihilated. In the end, my Immaculate Heart will triumph. The Holy Father will consecrate Russia to me and she will be converted and a period of grace shall be granted the world. In Portugal, the dogma of the faith will always be per preserved. Do not tell this to anybody. Francisco, yes, you may tell. When you pray the rosary, say after each mystery, O oh my Jesus, forgive us of our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those who are in most need of thy mercy. After this, there was a moment of silence, and then I asked, Is there anything more that you want of me? No, I do not want anything more of you today. Then, as before, Our Lady began to ascend towards the east until she fully disappeared in the immense distance of the firmament. It's very interesting, just as an aside before we continue. Our Lady is doing all of this because hell is real. Some of our clergy will float the idea that we have uh, a good hope that all people be saved. This isn't necessarily scriptural. This is definitely not uh, something that the saints held. And if this is an approved apparition by Our Lady from the church, why does she keep coming back if we don't have to worry and all souls might be saved? Every apparition here, even to little kids, Our Lady's preaching sin and reparation and penance. After that, Jacinta did not sleep for three days. The children said that they would have died of fear if Our Lady had not promised them that they were going to go to heaven. So we see here children who are prioritizing souls, who are prioritizing heaven, and then we see many in the church who have, it seems to us, no zeal, no courage, no backbone. There's definitely a dichotomy between what Mary said and what some of our clergy are saying, or guilty by omission by never talking about it. So which one is it? We have to be honest. We have to be open to what the possibilities might be. 
In August, on August 13th, the children were captured by the government and they were taken to jail and they were not allowed to have the vision. On August 13th, Our Lady still appeared at the Kova de Ira and the people that were there noticed a lot of the same phenomena. They noticed that the temperature dropped all of a sudden. Some of them said that they had little petals falling from the sky. They could see the leaves get pressed down over with, with, where Our Lady was normally standing, but the children weren't there. Later on, when they were released from prison on August 19th, the children were out doing work. Francisco and Lucia were there, and they had to call Jacinta to come, and immediately when Jacinta arrived, and a moment later, we saw Our Lady on a home oak tree. What do you want of me? This is a different home oak tree. I have no garden or backyard. This idea just came to me. But I promise you, when I buy a house, Blessed Mother, we're going to have all those oak trees. <laughs> all right. What do you want of me? I want you to continue going to the COVID era on the 13th and to continue praying the rosary every day. In the last month, I will perform a miracle so that all may believe. What do you want with the money that people leave in the COVID era? Have two litters made. One is to be carried by you and Jacinta and two other girls dressed in white. The other one is to be carried by Francisco and three other boys. The money from the litters is for the fiesta of Our Lady of the Rosary. And what is left over will help towards the construction of a chapel that is to be built here. I would like to ask you to cure some sick persons, Lucia asked. Yes, I will cure some of them during the year. Then looking very sad, Our Lady said to children again, pray. Pray very much and make sacrifices for sinners, for many souls go to hell because there are none to sacrifice themselves and to pray for them. And she began to ascend as usual towards the east. Let me take a quick pause. Why would Our Lady do this? I'm going to give you three reasons, not in any particular order. The first reason, why would Our Lady come with this message of praying for sinners, offering sacrifices for sinners, warning that souls are going to hell? First of all, because nobody else is doing it. And this is the only way she's going to get it talked about. Imagine if this didn't happen. What would we be talking about? Who, who knows? Where would our sense of urgency be? Another reason, the second reason I have why Our Lady is coming with this message is because it works. Our Lady wouldn't be asking us to do something that doesn't work. She's asking us to do penance, to pray the rosary every day, to offer sacrifice for sinners because it works. How do we know it works? Because Jesus saved us through his sacrifices. Many of you maybe had a conversion because maybe your mother, maybe your grandmother, somebody was praying for you, sacrificing for you, offering reparation on your behalf because they didn't want you to go to hell. Our Lady knows this works. Number one, nobody's doing it. Number two, it really, 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 really works. If you have a loved one who looks like they're going to hell, you can really intercede for them at the hour of their death. They can receive graces that you never imagined. A lot can happen in a millisecond before the time their soul leaves their body. There's many saints who've, who've had experiences where uh, somebody has repented at the hour of their death or th they'll come back and say, you saved me. Veronica Giuliani, she suffered so much, she offered so much sacrifices, they say that not a single soul went to hell during her lifetime because of all the sacrifices she offered. You can change their lives. There's always hope. Never doubt. Never, ever doubt. The third reason why Our Lady comes to this is because Mary always leads us to Jesus. Who is the number one person who sacrifices the most? Jesus. I was praying the rosary in my office, and I was looking at our statue of Our Lady and the statue of Maximilian Kolbe, and I was thinking, man, Mary's so good. And then I felt like Maximilian Kolbe was saying to me, yeah, she's very good, but all of her children end up on the cross. And I said, oh, snap. And the chills came down my back because I knew it was true. And he said, but there's nothing more beautiful than to be on the cross and have Our Lady by your side. Everybody's going to suffer. But when you're a child of Mary, she's there by you and you're not suffering alone. So Our Lady asked us to sacrifice. She asked us to do reparation. She asked us to do penance because she wants us to be like Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ who saves souls. Jesus Christ who truly loves. So Our Lady has all of this in mind. Anytime Our Lady is doing work, she's doing it with many ends in mind. It's the fifth apparition. Oh, I like the fifth apparition. So when Our Lady appeared, she says this, continue to pray the rosary in order to obtain the end of the war. In October, our Lord will come as well as Our Lady of Sorrows and Our Lady of Mount Carmel and Saint Joseph will appear with the child Jesus to bless the world. God is pleased with your sacrifices. Okay, so at this point, I haven't mentioned any of this, but the children are doing absolutely ridiculous sacrifices. 
ridiculous. They're going the entire day without drinking any water, even though they're working in the hot sun. They're skipping their meals. They're giving them away. They had found a, a very, very rough and torn up rope, and been, they tied it around their waists, and it was causing their skin to be rubbed raw to the point where it was bleeding in some places, and they would wear it to sleep. And this is what Mary had to say. She didn't say, children, you can stop. You're going overboard. No. <laughs> she says, God is pleased with your sacrifices. But God is merciful. He does not want you to sleep with the rope on, but only wear it during the day. <laughs> I was told to ask you many things, blessed mother. Cure some of the sick people. There's a deaf and a mute person here. Yes, I will cure some, but not others. In October, I will perform a miracle so that all may believe. Then Our Lady began to rise as usual and disappeared. October 13th, the sixth apparition. Our Lady appeared on the home oak. What do you want of me? I tell you that a chapel is to be built here in my honor. I am the Lady of the Rosary. Continue always to pray the Rosary every day. That goes for you too, seven-year-old. The war is going to end and the soldiers will soon return to their homes. I have many things to ask of you, Mother. The cure of some sick persons, the conversion of sinners and other things. Some, yes but not others. They must amend their lives and ask forgiveness for their sins. Looking very sad, Our Lady said, do not offend the Lord our God anymore because he is already so much offended. Then opening her hands, she made them reflect on the sun. And as she ascended, the reflection of her own light began to project on the sun itself. Now, I'm not gonna talk about the sun and oh, people thought they were gonna die. There were other things that appeared in the sky which are very relevant, which we don't really think about. So St. Joseph appeared, Our Lady of Sorrows with Jesus on the way of the cross, and Our Lady of Mount Carmel. These are extraordinarily important for our day. St. Joseph, as you know, is the patron saint of fathers. He's the patron saint of the universal church. He's the protector of the Holy Family, the protector of the universal church. What was Adam's failure as a protector of his family, of Eve? He didn't tell the serpent, no. The serpent is trying to enter into all of our homes. And if St. Joseph was in our house, his number one word when the serpent tries to come in would be no. As a father, I have to tell my children no all the time. Dad, I want to go here. No. Dad, I want to watch this. No. Dad, I want to wear this. No. That's what a good father does. All you have to do is say no to the serpent. Our bishops, our priests, should be saying the word no. When they say, we want liturgical dance, no. We want to have this ministry in here that's, uh, you know, against the teachings of the church on sexuality, no. You want to, we want to have abortion, vote for abortion, no. We have a large crisis in fatherhood. So that's one of the reasons why our most beautiful patron, St. Joseph, was appearing. And he blessed the earth. We have to think, what would St. Joseph do? All men, even when you're getting older, you must say, what would St. Joseph do? Would he get on his knees to protect Our Lady? Would he crawl across the ground to save our, our Lord from being sullied or gotten dirty? Yes, he would. What should I not do for my own family? Our Lady of Sorrows is a wonderful devotion. If you have a devotion to Our Lady of Sorrows, it's really a devotion to the life of Jesus. At Fatima, Our Lady is calling us to be this might be a weird word if you've never heard before, Marian co-redeemers. Just like we're all called to sacrifice of ourselves to make up what's lacking in the mystical body of Christ, St. Paul says. So I can offer my sacrifices for the salvation of souls. Well, Our Lady's calling us to be Marian in the way that we do that, by praying our rosary, by going to Mary, by having her as our sorrowful mother. And then Our Lady, at the last image, she showed herself in the sky as Our Lady of Mount Carmel. It's very important, if you're a Marian individual, that you wear the brown scapular. Even if you're not enrolled yet and you don't have a scapular, just start wearing it. And then when you find a priest to get you enrolled, get enrolled. Why? Pope Pius XII said that wearing the brown scapular is a sign of your consecration, and it's the very beginning of Marian consecration, where you say to Mary, be my mother. When you become a child of Mary, you will never be lost because you're one with Jesus. Jesus was the first person to give himself to Mary, and so through the scapular of Our Lady of Mount Carmel, you put that cloth on, it covers your body, it's kind of like your shield. Even if you're laid up in the hospital and you're in a little gown, you still have your, your scapular on your chest and on your back. It's a beautiful, beautiful devotion. Now let's talk a little bit about my favorite little seer, Jacinta. I like her a lot because she had such purity of heart. 
She was very firm, like a little firecracker. Maybe many of you know little girls who are very firm and say, I am not going to do that. I don't want to go to my room. And so Jacinta kind of had a little bit of that temperament. And she sacrificed so much. Her death was, for me, it was very tragic. I have a couple of quotes I'm going to read you. So right before she died, Our Lady had came to her and said that, do you really want to offer yourself for souls? And she said, yes, Blessed Mother. Our Lady came to see us, Jacinta said. She told us she would come and take Francisco to heaven very soon. She asked me if I still want to convert more sinners. I said, I did. She told me I would be going to a hospital where I would suffer a great deal and that I am to suffer for the conversion of sinners in reparation for the sins committed against the Immaculate Heart of Mary and for the love of Jesus. I asked if you would go with me. She said you wouldn't and that this I would find the hardest. She said my mother would take me and then I would have to stay all alone. Jacinta suffered terribly right up until the day of her departure for Lisbon. She kept clinging to me and sobbing. I'll never see you again, nor my mother, nor my brothers, nor my father. I'll never see anyone again, and then I'll die all alone. We shall never see each other again. Pray a lot for me until I go to heaven. Then I'll pray a lot for you. Never tell this secret to anyone, even if they kill you. Love Jesus in the Immaculate Heart of Mary very much, and make many sacrifices for sinners. From Lisbon, she sent me word that Our Lady had come to see her there again. She had told her the day and the hour of her death. Finally, Jacinta reminded me to be good. That's heartbreaking for me. I couldn't imagine, I think of my own daughter who's seven years old. Imagine her suffering and then not having her family who loves her the most to be there with her. That is asking the most of any child. Like I've seen children suffer a lot, but they need their mommies and they need their daddies there with them. And for Our Lady to ask that of Jacinta is kind of heartbreaking. But she knew Jacinta would say yes. And Mary still, like a good mother, all of her children are going to end up on the cross. She was there by her side. Mary even appeared to her and told her the exact moment, the exact hour. We have to continue to be faithful to Mary even in the most darkest times because never was it known that anyone who fled to her protection was left unaided. It's never been known. It has been known that people have not fled to her and haven't been helped, but never that they fled to her. She's a good mother. She loves us more than our own mothers. So why was Jacinta so faithful? What did she have that I, I don't have? Because I'm a weak individual. I'll be the first to admit it. And this is the answer to that. A bishop asked Lucia, why was Jacinta so faithful? The vision of hell filled her with horror to such a degree that every penance and mortification was nothing in her eyes, if it could only prevent souls from going there. Well, I'm now going to answer the second question, which has come to me from various quarters. How is it that Jacinta, small as she was, let herself be possessed by such a spirit of mortification and penance, and understood it so well? I think the reason is this, firstly, God willed to bestow on her a special grace through the Immaculate Heart of Mary, and secondly, it was because she had looked upon hell. She had seen the ruin of souls who fall therein. Some people, even the most devout, refused to speak to children about hell in case it would frighten them. Yet God did not hesitate to show hell to three children, one of whom was only six years old. Knowing well that they would, this is Lucia's words by the way, knowing well that they would be horrified to the point of, I would almost dare to say, withering away with fear, Jacinta often sat thoughtfully on the ground or on a rock and exclaimed, Oh hell, hell, how sorry I am for the souls who go to hell, and the people down there burning alive like wood in the fire. Then shuddering, she knelt down with her hands joined and recited the prayer that Our Lady taught us. O oh my Jesus, forgive us of our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of your mercy. Now, Your Excellency, will you understand how my own impression was that the final words of this prayer refers to souls in the greatest danger of damnation, of those who are nearest to it? Jacinta remained on her knees like this for long periods of time, saying the same prayer over and over and over. From time to time, like someone waking from a sleep, she called out to her brother or myself, Francisco, Francisco, are you praying with me? We must pray very much to save souls from hell. So many go there, so many. So I would like to take a couple seconds for us to think about hell. I'm not saying that we need to be as hyper-focused as Jacinta, but we don't think about hell enough. Many of us know people who are in mortal sin, objectively speaking. 
We have family members who, for one reason or another, have left the church. Um, I have a lot of family who's not in the church. I have a lot of friends who reject the church. I don't pray for them as much as I should. I would think it's beneficial for us. If Our Lady found it beneficial to take a child to hell, I think it would be beneficial for us to at least think about hell for a couple seconds. So I would like for you to imagine first flames everywhere. Imagine what it would feel like for you to be engulfed in flames even for five seconds. I could endure five seconds in flames if I had a good reason. Imagine your skin being peeled off. Imagine your hair being pulled out. Imagine your eyeballs being plucked. Imagine your fingernails being clipped off. Imagine just the worst torments that you could ever possibly imagine. And realizing that it's never, ever, ever, ever going to stop. There will never, ever be any relief. And this is something that we have chosen for ourselves if, we're, if we personally are in hell. And this is something that we could save our family and our friends from. Our Lady said that so many souls go to hell because there's nobody to pray and to do penance for us. I myself was on the highway to hell. I know many of you here were also going to hell until you received some grace. And I don't know why you received that grace, but somebody somewhere was suffering for you, was praying for you. What wouldn't we do to save one of our family and our friends from hell? I have a good, good formula that's going to make it very easy. I wouldn't be setting this up if I didn't have like a super duper amazing, beautiful answer, okay? We're living in absolutely diabolical times and we're not fighting back properly. But Our Lady has given us a solution. So Our Lady said, remember, at that third apparition, she said, I'm going to ask for the consecration of Russia and for the communion of reparation to be done on the first Saturdays. So I'm going to give you Our Lady's solution, and then we're going to see how we can magnify it with our spiritual exchange rate for 2019 to save as many souls as possible. I promise you this works. Our Lady appeared in the 1920s a couple of times to Sister Lucia, and she promised anybody who goes and makes the first Saturday devotion five times, she promises the graces necessary for salvation. And the five reasons were because of sins against her Immaculate Conception, sins against her perpetual virginity, people blaspheming her divine maternity, people taking devotion from her from the children, and desecrating her shrines and images. So that's why there's five, because she has these five categories. So very simple. Go to confession. Easy. Go to communion. No problem. State of grace. No problem. Pray the rosary one time, only five decades, and then meditate on some aspect of our Lord's life for 15 minutes. She promises me the grace is necessary for my salvation. That's a really, really good deal. So imagine you've got your soul clean. Imagine you've prayed the rosary, you've meditated on the life of Jesus and you receive Holy Communion. And the key is with the intention of making reparation to her heart and for the outrages against the Sacred Heart. If you do that, the grace is necessary for your salvation. Yeah, 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 but I'm not worried about my own salvation, bro. I'm worried about my sister. I'm worried about my father-in-law. I'm worried about my uncle. I'm worried about my grandkids. Don't worry. Well, I've got just what you need. If Our Lady's willing to give you your soul, a lifetime of soul, for five little activities, once for five months, that's nothing. What would she do if you did it every day? What if you went to Mass every day? What if you prayed the Rosary every day? What if you spent 15 minutes after Mass sitting in there in the chapel, thinking about the Lord, having a sense of the presence of Mary every day? And what if you went to confession once a week? First of all, you'd be getting a plenary indulgence for yourself every single day of your life. Straight to heaven for you if you die. Your soul is worth five. Maybe my husband, maybe he's terrible. I'll give him 50. Okay, I'm done with my husband in two months. He's good. <laughs> this is called the communion of reparation. Lifestyle. It's a change of lifestyle. How long does it take? Mass, 30 minutes. The rosary, 20 minutes. 15 minutes with Our Lady, one hour and five minutes. Even if you sleep eight hours a day, one hour out of 16 is still less than one tenth of your day. And I promise you, whatever it is that you have to do, you'll do it better. I could fast all day long. What's more powerful, my fasting or the sacrifice of Jesus Christ? 
The sacrifice of Jesus Christ is infinitely more powerful. Okay, let me just be clear right now. I'm nobody. I work in a little rundown office that looks, I think it has asbestos. <laughs> and I make videos and they touch people all over the world. I make it, I forget all about it, and then people say, you changed my life. It wasn't me, bro. The communion of reparation lifestyle. The graces necessary are in the mass, but Mary gave us a formula. So I'm gonna give you advice. So my advice for you, if you're going once a month, scoot it up to once every two weeks if you go to confession once a month. If you're going to confession once every two weeks, go to once a week. If you're going to mass a couple times out of the week, try and go every day. I personally have substituted 15 minutes meditating on the life of Jesus. I change that to do that in front of the Blessed Sacrament. So that I'm there looking at Jesus when I'm thinking about his baptism in the Jordan River. Or I'm thinking about the wedding feast at Cana. I'm there eye to eye and Blessed Mother's with me. Now, do you have that much time every day? Things are going to come up. In an ideal world, you'll sacrifice. You'll go to the early Mass. You'll go to the late Mass. But at the hour of your death, we're going to look back on our lives with different priorities. So, taking care of your soul. Confession, adoration, rosary, Eucharist. There's no soul that you cannot save this way. I know many of you have nothing to lose. You, your children are already grown. Maybe you didn't live a life that you wish you would have lived. Maybe you wish, I, I wish I would have raised my kids better. I wish I would have taken them to Mass. I wish I would have been a better husband. I didn't start going to Mass until I was 50. Now my kid never goes to church. What are you going to do about that? Are you going to be a man and offer yourself in reparation for his sins, for your child's sins? Are you going to be united with Jesus Christ? Or are you going to sit there and worry? No. You go to do the communion of reparation. I promise you, you will not regret it. Now, I was asked to talk about the rosary. How could I not talk about the rosary? I love Our Lady so much, you'll always see me with a rosary. If I don't have a rosary, I run to get my rosary. When I was looking at those apparitions, Our Lady kept saying, pray the rosary, 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 pray the rosary. Why I kept praying the rosary? The rosary helps you to know Jesus better. The rosary makes you more disposed in Holy Communion. The rosary makes you more likely to make a good confession. The rosary crushes the head of the serpent so that if you have any fears of getting rid of the mortal sins you have, if you have any, the rosary makes all things better. Okay, I have some disturbing news. You should find this disturbing. When the rosary was first introduced, what we call the rosary today was a children's rosary. The rosary is all the mysteries. So when we say, I prayed the rosary for you. Well, thank you. You prayed one third of the rosary for me. And I'm going to prove that briefly. And then I'm going to tell you some beautiful, beautiful, beautiful things. So this is from St. Louis de Montfort. And if you ha I'm sure all of you have seen this beautiful book called The Secret of the Rosary. In it, page 14, this is dedicated to little children. He says, Dear little friends, of course it would be too much to expect you to say the whole 15 mysteries every day, but do say at least five mysteries and say them with love and devotion. If you were to go back a few pages to the passage dedicated to sinners, this is how he promotes the rosary. He says, So by all means, we should eagerly crown ourselves with these roses from heaven and recite the entire rosary every day. That is to say, three rosaries each of five decades. And there's so many quotes like that throughout this book. Here's another quote from St. Louis. Believe me, dear brother, if you genuinely wish to attain a high degree of prayer in all honesty and without falling into the illusions of the devil, so common with those who practice mental prayer, say the whole rosary every day. But don't feel bad, because then he goes on to say, or at least five decades of it. So, you might be saying, why did I come to this talk? He now wants me to go to Mass every day? Confession once a week? Four rosaries? Three rosaries a day? This guy's an extremist. <laughs> I'm being radicalized. <laughs> I know, it's true. <laughs> we strive for the best. We strive for the best. 
but I don't want you to think that I'm doing everything possible by doing one rosary. I'm already doing my whole daily rosary. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can do more. These are some of the promises that Our Lady promises. So whoever shall faithfully serve me by the recitation of the rosary shall receive signal graces, signs, little gifts from heaven, little perfect timing, providential occurrences. They're beautiful. Have you ever had those things happen where it was like, man, what are the odds? I'll give you one quick example. Somebody wanted me to join Exodus 90. Adrian was the first person to ask me. And I said, mm, I'm making excuses. I'm too old. You're young. Even though I look very young. And then I was making excuses, but it was weighing on my heart. Then I got an email at 1.31 p.m. I have proof of this. I'll put it in the video. At 1.31 p.m., my friend says, sends me an email. You should really consider doing Exodus 90. At the exact second that I got that email, at 1.31 p.m., I got a text message from another young man in College Station saying, this is my fifth day of doing Exodus 90, and I feel the attachments to the world leaving me. And I looked at my statue of the Blessed Mother, and I said, you win. <laughs> you will receive signal graces. She promises special protection and the greatest graces to all of those who shall recite the rosary. John Paul II prayed all the mysteries every day. On May 13, 1981, the Feast of Our Lady of Fatima, he was shot from just a few feet distance and by a marksman who was... How did this guy live? Bullets penetrated his chest, barely missing his vital organs, and he had the confidence the entire time. Oh, don't worry. I'm going to live. Oh, Holy Father, how did you know you were going to live? Because the Blessed Mother is protecting me. Although one finger with bad intention pulled the trigger, the Mother of God was guiding the bullets. He had special protection from the Virgin Mary. The rosary shall be a powerful armor against hell. It will destroy vice, decrease sin, and defeat heresies. The rosary will cause virtue and good works to flourish. It will obtain for souls the abundant mercy of God. It will withdraw the hearts of men from the love of the world and its vanities. And I could go on and on and on. Pray the rosary every day. And if you're ready, if you feel Mary's calling you, consider praying all the mysteries. If you need a step, go to three rosaries. Our Lady crushes the head of the serpent. The serpent, he's not going to yell. He's not going to scream. He's going to pick at you, depending on what your temperament is. Some of you worry profusely, myself included. And he'll put a little thought. What about this? What if this doesn't happen? And then you're like, oh, well, yeah. Maybe some of you are choleric. Your temperament is like, ooh, you just better watch out. He'll, you never know when you're going to set off. And you're like, dear Lord, please help me. Don't let me, get, don't let me lose my temper today. And the devil is there saying, Putting, you're trying to let it go, and he's like, no, 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 come back, come back, come back. Think about this again, think about this again. The devil has little pricks. Some of you suffer t to severely from lust, and you're just trying to avoid lust at all costs. And the devil will put the little thought in your mind and let your imagination run wild. When, in my own experience, because I used to suffer, I was actually talking to my wife about this last night because she couldn't fall asleep, and I sleep like a baby. Before, I, I would be up all night, I would drink wine, I would take shots of, uh, you know, that purple bag, what's that, Crown Royal? I would take shots of Crown Royal to put me to sleep. I'd wake up in the middle of the night, I'd be grinding my teeth, I'd be so depressed, I'd be so anxious. Praying four rosaries a day, living the communion of reparation lifestyle, I sleep like a baby. I don't worry about anything. It's, so, it's amazing. My wife was like, how come you sleep so much now? I don't know. I'm taking my pills. <laughs> I had a dear friend who recently moved and she had been sexually abused her entire life. And she had a lot of sexual, sexual deviations uh, throughout her young adulthood. And she was always in mortal sin. And I said, pray the rosary. Okay, I'm only gonna pray one though. Okay, fine. And then with one, she was really fighting. She wouldn't commit those sins anymore, but she was really fighting. And it was like, ah, she would have to go to confession and then come home. And then like, just, she would have to leave the house sometimes. The temptations were so bad. And then I said, you know, it could be diabolical. Sometimes lust is just lust. Sometimes your body is just acting up and it's just that. But sometimes it's the devil because that's how he wants to enslave people. And she started doing four. And she says, now the thoughts come. The temptation comes, but it doesn't enter into her heart. And she's been protected ever since. Now, I'm not saying that the rosary is a substitute for medication. 
I'm not saying it's a substitute for self-control or willpower, but Our Lady will protect you. She is powerful. She has all the graces ready to give you, but they cost something. They cost your effort. They cost your energy. If this was the last time I was ever going to say anything to anybody, I would say pray the entire rosary. If, if it's hard, and it's going to be really hard if you're going from one to four, but if you can go from one to three, the beautiful thing that happens is praying one becomes nothing. I've prayed five rosaries today, maybe six. And you might say, how? I can't even focus during one. God's not calling you to be successful. He's calling you to be faithful. Do the best you can. St. Louis de Montfort has this to say. These are not Gabriel's words. Gabriel said to pray the rosary while you're working and driving and not paying attention. I didn't say that. This is what St. Louis de Montfort says. If you have any problems, take it up with him if you go to heaven. <laughs> the rosary can even be said at work. If people's daily duties keep them at their jobs because the work of one's hands is not by any means always incompatible with vocal prayer. Of course, since the soul has its limitations and can only do so much, when we're concentrating on manual work, we cannot give our undivided attention to things of the spirit such as prayer. But when we cannot do otherwise, this kind of prayer is not without its value in Our Lady's eyes. She rewards our goodwill more than our external actions. I advise you to divide up your rosary into three parts and to say each group of mysteries at a different time of the day. This, this is much better than saying the whole 15 decades all at once. So if you wanted to try this, I would recommend in the morning doing the I believe in God, the Father Almighty, and all those introductory prayers, and then doing your first five decades, and then sometime later, maybe on your lunch break before you go back to work, do five more decades, not doing the beginning prayers, because remember, the rosary is one long continuous prayer. So it can become very tedious if you're like, oh my gosh, I gotta do the Apostles' Creed again? I gotta do the Hail Holy Queen again? No, you don't have to. You don't have to do any of this. None of this is binding by sin, but I can tell you it's extraordinarily helpful. The analogy I give is that on Mother's Day, is it better to take your mom out to dinner? Mom, I love you. It's Mother's Day. You're such a good mom. Uh, I don't have time. Well, I better not do anything at all. I just won't even call her. No, of course not. It's better to do something poorly than to not do it at all, right? So it's better to pray one rosary the best you can and then do the best you can to pray a rosary even if you're in the car. It's better to do that than nothing at all. I have one more thing to say before we conclude. You might think this Fatima thing is over. It's not over. Some people say, the church has kept from us all the mysteries. There's more to it. I know there's more. The mystery about John Paul II getting shot, that can't be it. Well, Our Lady has something else to say. How does Our Lady say it? Remember, the, the miracle of the sun was October 13th, 1917. Our Lady appeared in a church-approved apparition to Sister Agnes Sasagawa in Akita, Japan on October 13th. Our Lady is very particular. John Paul II was shot on May 13th for a reason. Our Lady appeared in October 13th and she says this. My, and she says this to the sister here. My dear daughter, listen well to what I have to say to you. You will inform your superior. As I told you, if men do not repent and better themselves, the Father will inflict a terrible punishment on all humanity. It will be a punishment greater than the deluge, such as one will never have seen before. Fire will fall from the sky and will wipe out a great part of humanity, the good as well as the bad, sparing neither the priests nor the faithful. The survivors will find themselves so desolate that they will wish that they were dead. The only arms which will remain for you will be the rosary and the sign left by my son. Each day recite the rosary. With the rosary, pray for the pope, the bishops, and the priest. The work of the devil will infiltrate even into the church in such a way that we will see cardinals against cardinals, bishops against bishops. The priests who are faithful to me will be scorned and opposed by their confreres. Churches and altars will be sacked. The church will be full of those who accept compromises, and the demon will press many priests and consecrated souls to leave the service of the Lord. The demon will be especially implacable against souls consecrated to God. The thought of the loss of so many souls is the cause of my sadness. If sins increase in number and in gravity, there will be no longer pardon for them. Pray very much the prayers of the rosary. I alone am able to save you from the calamities which approach. Those who place their confidence in me will be saved. So you guys are the Legion of Mary. Most of you. The Legion of Mary is an army. 
When the battle is going badly and you still want to win, you have to make up for those who are not fighting. So although it sounds like I'm like, dude, what are you coming with? Four rosaries? I'm barely doing one. If you think about how many people should be praying the rosary, you're offering yourself as a victim in a good way, like our Lord offered himself as a sacrifice for those who are not in grace. We need you. We need you. You're our only hope. The battle is going very badly, but Marian answers are the best answers. Our Lady is the mediatrix of all grace. She's going to win this, and she can win this very quickly. I, I close with this quote from Sister Lucia. Remember, a young lady who had Mary appearing to her throughout her entire life. She says this, The most holy virgin in these last times in which we live has given a new efficacy to the recitation of the rosary to such an extent that there is no problem, no matter how difficult it is, whether temporal or above all spiritual, in the personal life of each one of us and of our families that cannot be solved by the rosary. There is no problem, I tell you, no matter how difficult it is, that we cannot resolve by the prayer of the Holy Rosary. If I could give you one piece of advice, it would be to pray the entire rosary. Start with three. And if, once you get three, praying that one more, you'll wait, you'll feel it in your soul. The fourth one will become very easy. Your life will change. And not only that, you're going to change the lives of many individuals. God bless you all.